This improv story is based on an idea a man finds strange contraption under bed. Let the story commence. Craig woke up during the night. He said, what did I, how did I wake up? It was the sound of a fox outside. Did I wake myself up <laughs> with the loudness of my own farting? <laughs> uh, have I got sleep apnea? Am I kind of no able to sleep? Uh, breathe? So... <clears throat> But I can't remember then that what woke me up. What and it's again and again kept happening. And then one night uh, when he woke up, he just sort of like, oh fuck! And he turned on at his belly and he sort of leaned there beside his bed. And then he just sort of like leaned there and there, and then leaned there and there. He just fancied leaning right. And you know, how sometimes you do things. You know how sometimes you do things. You might be you might wake might wake up in bed. And then you just sort of lean on the side of the bed. And you decide to sort of lean in a bit more. You know, just, you know, flop down. Remember when you were younger? Remember you'd just do things like that? Because you want to see what it feels like. But that's what he did. And there, under the bed, he saw something. He'd no one looked under his bed for fucking ages. There, under his bed, he saw a contraption of some sort. And he's like, what, what's, what's that? He couldn't quite make it because it was like the, the sun was just sort of, this is quite early. Like six in the morning, it's still a wee bit, it's, it's a bit of dawn, there's a wee bit of sunlight sort of. He couldn't quite make it out. You could see like bits of metal or something. There was something, say a cog. There was a cog there. It was sort of contraption. So it was sad, do not it? Was that to, was that, is that, is that, what did I shove under the bed? Is that something to do with the, I wonder what that is. And then he went back up on top of the mattress. A wee bit later on, he looked down when it was a bit lighter. He could see it a bit better. And it was like metal and there was a kind of wooden handle thing. And, and he went back to bed. Then he completely fell asleep and woke up about nine. And slept in for work. He was meant to be in work at nine. Um, so he was late, so he rushed to go to work and then, like, get ready for work. And then he thought, oh, wait a minute, that contraption. So he looked under his bed and he pulled it out and it was this contraption thing about that size. Like, couldn't quite work out what it was. Um, and he took it into work. Well, he thought, I'll look at it in there. And his boss came in and went, uh, Craig, so uh, I want you to get through your inbox there. And here's some new stuff. <clears throat> Big pile of stuff in the inbox tray. Paper. And um, and said, also, you know how you said you want to get away early? You know, you've actually got, you've got to stay late. All that shit. And also, I'm unhappy with your work recently. That sort of thing. And as the boss was gone away, the boss said, hey, wait a minute, give me a second. It's just something, when I get embarrassed, that if a story isn't gone well, I, I go like that. Um... The boss went like that. What's that? What's that there? What's that there? And Craig went, Oh, it's just a, it's just a thing I found under my bed. A thing you found under your bed and you're bringing it into work? You found under your bed? What is it anyway? And Craig said, um, I don't know. I, don't, I, 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 I thought I could come, come in and maybe you could all find it. His boss went like, what is this? Some sort of coffee morning? A primary school? And Craig went, what? what did, let, me, let me have a look at it. And the boss had a look at it. And there was a hole. In it. And the boss said, I'm going to put my hand in here and see what that does. 
and the boss put his horn right in this kind of hole and it's all like bits of metal and it wasn't it wasn't like a perfect sort of hole like that it was um just a bit you could see you know there's a pole there there was a kind of bar there there was a bar there a bar it just looked like you could sort of fit in and there was a handle at the end a wooden sort of thing as if you got to reach in you get it oh hang was about that size I think it was at the size they are porcupine no, it's about the size of a wombat. All right, but that size. It's about that size. That's that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a very very large wombat though. That's not a fucking what is that a fucking one? Is that a fucking kangaroo? Mel like that, mel like that there. They have got the hardest arses in the world. Did you know that? They've got this kind of bone sort of cartilage thing on their ass. Um, they basically the, the, it's said to use like they, they sort of burrow into a hole and they can almost stick their arse out and you kind of get in like I was in Australia and they showed us and they sort of like tap in the arse it's like rock solid it's a thing anyway but size of that boss stuck his horn and went like that women I think I've, I've, I've just, I think I've got, and, and Craig went, I, I don't know if you should do that, I'm not sure, and then he remembered he hated his boss. And he went, on you go. And the boss went, you sure? What, what, what does this do? Craig went, I don't really know, that's what I mean, bring it, I'm bringing it in. To see? And the boss grabbed the handle. Tried pulling it, that didn't do anything. Tried pushing it, that didn't do anything. But it's when he twisted it, then it did something. It went like that. And his boss had a fucking thing like that, man. It was like a big fucking laser uh, sword thing like that. His boss like that. See with this, I'll be able to tell every cunt what to do. And they went like, you're ready to tell us what he did. He says, I know, but there's some people in here who don't respect my opinion, who are thinking that they've, they're going to go for it. I know some of you have been sending your CVs out. So you don't really care. You don't really do what I say because you're going to be leaving anyway. Well, see now, you've got to do what I say because I'll fucking kill you. And he went like, like you there, John. There's a guy, John, who used to go like that. Yes, boss, yes, boss. And he was like that. Date yourself. Because he was leaving in about three weeks. And he went like, John, I want you to go through that spreadsheet that I asked you to go through. And I want you to uh, order it alphabetically without using any, you know, without uh, like clicking on the top and uh, order it alphabetically. I want you to do it manually. Date yourself. And John just went like that, right down the fucking middle, went like that. And to begin with, it looked like nothing had happened. It almost looked like just a beam of light, just like shining a torch down somebody like that, nothing happened. And then John went like that, I don't feel well. I don't feel... And he pointed at Craig and he said, I fucking told you to get on with the stuff in your fucking entry. And Craig said, here, shove it up your fucking ass." And the boss, no hearing him right, no understanding him right, thought he meant the sword thing. 
the laser sword, and he shoved it up his own ass. The boss. And honestly, it made this perfect hole right in the middle of the boss because he's twisted it so it made a hole like a drill. Completely hollowed out the inside and he dropped dead because it went right up to his brain. He looked like a, a thing you put in the end of a, a pencil. Remember you used to get that in, in school? Not a rubber, but you know, just a wee bit of fun, you know, you'd sort of put it on, it'd be like a wee... A pencil topper, it'd be like a wee thing. Just it looks kind of nice. Completely hollow inside. And Craig went like that. I'm the new boss. Before anybody else tries to claim it, I'm the new boss. And the first thing I want us to do is to build a big pencil to put him on. And we'll put him outside the building and people will come and give us money. And he put... They put the boss hollowed out on top of this big pencil. Like that. Deed. They preserved them. He didn't rot away. They preserved them with chemicals. And people would come to get pictures next to it. And there'd be a wee donation box. And that money made it so that they didn't have to work again. Craig and the rest of the team didn't have to work again. Because there's so many donations and things like that. And they would just sit in the office. Looking at the office like that. Here. 100 quid notes like that. Here. Here. Lighting it like that. And everybody would be like that. <laughs> the end. And that's a true story. That's a true story. How do I know? See the boss? Uh, Tame Parlor says 1 out of 10 probably your worst jet. Maybe it is, but it's because this is actually a true story, this one. See the, the boss that got hollowed out, that was me. I'm still there right now. I can't explain why. I'm so somehow here and there at the same time. It's very interesting what happened. We might come back to it in a um, a sequel or something. I don't. I don't. I don't know. It's something that we're definitely going to have to look into. It's something that we definitely have to look into. Definitely have to look into that one. 